We recently visited the largest permanent display of duck decoys in the state at the Lakeview Museum of Science and Industry in Peoria. These decoys were carved for a utilitarian purpose, namely to attract ducks to the hunters. But uh, in the middle 40s and uh, the 50s, people started looking at them as works of art, which they are, they're sculpture, they're wildfowl sculpture, and uh, are highly collectible. Behind us are a panel or a case for each of the five major uh, carvers uh, in the Illinois River Valley. Uh, there were over 200 carvers, but uh, the five that are featured uh, are the most important and the best known. Well, we'll start with perhaps the uh, best known of all, which is Charles Perdue. He's a very prolific carver. His wife Edna did a lot of the early painting of the decoys until around World War II when she was supposed to contracted some kind of an illness due to probably dipping the uh, brush in her mouth to you know, keep them moist when she painted. But uh, Charlie, he made a lot of decoys. He made a lot of duck calls and he made the fancy call that he called. It was a mahogany call, and he carved initials and little uh, scenes, you know, such as uh, flying mallards, etc. And he made crow calls, and he patented his crow call in 1909. The reason why he made calls was because he was a hunter himself. And, uh, well, his first venture into call making, I think it was around 1900. He, uh, there was a lot of crows in and they were kind of a nuisance and people liked to go crow hunting just to get their, their eye ready for hunting, duck hunting season. So, they, so he produced crows that he used to sell for 50 cents a piece. Behind us here are, is the work uh, of Charles Walker of Princeton, Illinois. He is very well known throughout the country as one of Illinois' premier carvers. Again, his style is kind of a high-necked uh, decoy, uh, very, very handsome, as I would say, and beautifully painted, and they've become very collectible. Then from the Peoria area, we have the uh, well-known uh, decoys of Charles Schoenheider Sr. Uh, they're a little flatter, a little, uh, just, it's indistingu almost indistinguishable subtle differences between them. Uh, his most famous decoy is the large uh, one-legged goose that stands in the middle of the gallery. Uh, he only made a dozen of those back in 1919. We also need to mention Burt Graves, another Peoria carver who did very fine decoys. And uh, the last of our big five, Don, is, is uh, Robert Elliston of uh, Bureau. a Bureau. Robert Elliston passed away in 1915. Uh, he did a very good job, I would say. Uh, his decoys are highly collectible because of the fact that they're, you know, probably all of them are 100 years old. And uh, he did a very, his wife was a very good painter, just like Edna Perdue was for her husband, Charlie. I remember went down to talk to Charlie Perdue several times, and he said that he uh, learnt, more or less learned how to make decoys from Robert Elliston. There are uh, probably 30 or 40 or 50 decoys here on display, and there's another uh, equal amount in the basement. Ours is certainly the largest uh, de collection of decoys that is on display anywhere in the state. It is our intent that uh, folk art uh, of which decoys are a part will remain a permanent uh, feature of Lakeview Museum.
In addition to the duck decoys, the museum has two other galleries devoted to folk art. One contains Lakeview's collection of textiles, and the other is used for rotating exhibits. To reach the Lakeview Museum of Arts and Sciences, call 309-686-7000.